Good morning, dear friends. We are about to begin this Mass of Monday on the Memorial of St. Philip Neri. In this Mass, we pray for all those who have asked our prayers. We pray for your families. Pray for people in your lives. But in this Mass, I'd like to also pray for all those who have served our country faithfully and given their lives for her. Pray and ask that God may bless them, that God may reward their service. We pray for our doctors, our nurses, our caregivers. Pray for all those dedicated to caring for others, people in our nursing homes. Pray that God may bless them, that God may reward their kindness. On this feast of Saint Philip Mary, we continue to pray for all those who dedicate their lives as priests, as nuns, and in religious activities, that God may bless their ministry with fruitful results. I'll invite you to bring your intentions and let us pray together here at this Mass. Our opening hymn for today is Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, his, his step. So he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peace, full Zion turn, the like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, heart redeemed us by His blood. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Philip Neri. In this Mass, we bring your intentions to God. We pray for our patients here in our hospital and pray for our doctors and all those dedicated to caring for our sick. We pray for God to watch over and to bless them. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who never ceases to bestow the glory of holiness, on the faithful servant you raised up for yourself. Graciously grant that the Holy Spirit may kindle in us the fire with which he wonderfully filled the heart of St. Philip Neri. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When, while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled to, sorry. From Miletus, Paul had the presbyters of the church at Ephesus summoned. When they came to him, he addressed them. You know how I lived among you. The whole time, from the day I first came to the province of Asia, I served the Lord with humility and with the tears and trials that came to me because of the plots of the Jews. And I did not at all shrink 
from telling you what was for your benefit or from teaching you in public or in your homes. I earnestly bore witness for both Jews and Greeks to repentance before God and to faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. But now compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem. What will happen to me there I do not know, except that in one city after another, the Holy Spirit has been warning me that imprisonment and hardships are with me. Yet, I consider life of no importance to me, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus, to bear witness to the gospel of God's grace. But now I know that none of you, of whom I preach the kingdom of God during my travels, will ever see my face again. And so I solemnly declare to you this day that I will not be responsible for the blood of any one of you. For I did not shrink from proclaiming to you the entire plan of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is Alleluia. A bountiful rain you shall shower down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restored the land when it languished. Your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O Lord, you provided it for the needy. Alleluia. Blessed today by day be the Lord, who bears our burdens. God, who is our salvation. God is our saving God. The Lord, my Lord, he controls the pathways of death. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you, with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those you gave to me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you. Because the words you gave to me have given to them, and they accepted them, and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you have given to me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine and I haven't glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I would like to reflect with you this morning from the readings the first reading and the gospel reading. In, in both readings, we see how the Lord Jesus first 
in the gospel in the first reading we see how Paul is going to leave Corinth. He's on his way to Jerusalem to Jer to um, to Rome. He's not sure what is going to happen to him when he gets to Rome. But based on what the Holy Spirit has revealed to him, it's going to be a rough path for Paul. Paul is not going to shy away. He is not going to abandon the mission only because it's going to be difficult. Paul understands one thing. That God will never give him a vision if God has not made provisions for him. So Paul understands, yeah, the future is going to be uncertain. The future is going to be difficult. I have no idea how this is all going to span out. All I know, based on what the Spirit has told me, is that I should expect difficulties, bombs on the road. But Paul wasn't going to to bow out, to fizzle out, or to be scared or be afraid. He was going to face up to life in life's own terms, trusting that there's one behind him who can do all things and who can sustain him through all things. However, at this time, Paul is making a farewell, a goodbye speech. When you come to the Gospel reading, you also see the Lord. It's time for the Lord to go. In the case of the Lord, he knows everything that is going to happen to him because he is God. He has an idea. He knows everything. He has a mental video, a mental picture of everything that is going to happen to him. He also has a mental picture of the disciples, his apostles that he was going to leave behind. He could see through their hearts. He could see how worried, how stressed out they were. He could tell every emotion that was jumping, you know, and just knocking at the, at the sleeve on the, the door of your hearts. He could tell all of that. And so in John's Gospel, the 17th chapter, that whole chapter, the Lord lets the apostles know, generally when someone is about to die, the things that he cares about the most are the things that occupy his heart at the very last moment. Here, in this prayer, the Lord made it clear, not just to the apostles, but to you and to me, that we are the most treasured inheritance he has. We are the most important things in his life. And so he is speaking to the Father about his apostles, about his followers who would come years down the line, to this day and right down to the end of history. That was what was on his mind. So, so could you imagine that you were the one on the Lord's mind while he was preparing to go to the cross? You were on his mind. It was you, no one else. It was us. That, that says a lot about our standing, you know, in God's, our standing in God's presence. That we matter so much that we were the last thing on the Lord's mind and so in prayer he is not praying about anything of his he is praying the entire time about his followers about you about me about every one of us that, that, that says a lot and I want you to recognize that that's how important you are to Jesus that's how important you are to the Lord but that wasn't all the Lord was also preparing his apostles for the final separation, for the final departure. They may not see him again, at least not in the physical flesh. They did see him after resurrection with a spiritual body. But they were not going to see him in a physical body any longer. And that parallels what Paul was telling the Christians in Ephesus. He says, you would never see me again. See this face? You would never behold it. And I can only imagine how that felt to the apostles and the disciples in Ephesus. You would never see me again. That would be it. This was a time when we didn't have emails. We didn't have cell phones to send text messages to update them on their journey. And that was separation. 
And that's one thing I also want you to think about. In this period, we have experienced a lot of separation. And the fact is that we will experience more separation. Each day I wake up, I tell myself, there are people I may never see again. And that's a fact. Believe it or not. Each day you wake up, there are people you saw today for the last time. Believe it or not. That's a fact in life. Because we are born, we live, and we die. That's just the way it is. The good news for us Christians is that when we die, that doesn't spare the end of our lives. We meet again. We are, we are able, in the presence of our good God, to celebrate life. So how do you handle separation? How do you deal with separation? Because it is a fact of life. It's painful. We, 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 we dread it. We fear it. We don't want to experience it. But it's part of life. And so today the Lord also wants us to think about that. To think about separation. To think about departure. Because we will experience a lot of them. Whether due to transfers. Due to sickness. To death. Whatever it is. We will in the course of our life experience several separations. But we must learn to deal with them one day after another. And that's what reminds me of the saints whose feast day we celebrate today. It says, if I can get through today, I would have no fear for tomorrow. If only I can get through today, I will have no fear for tomorrow. Those are the words of St. Philip Mary. And I hope that you can appropriate those words and learn something from them. That means, God, if you can see me through today, I will trust you that you will see me through tomorrow, the day after, the week after, the month after, the year after. That's what St. Philip Neri was referencing then. And our God has proven any number of times that he can see us through today. That means we must not fear tomorrow because tomorrow will dawn on us and the Lord will still be there with us because that's how much he cares for us. So we pray, dear friends, that two things. First, that we recognize our value before God. And secondly, that we learn to handle and to manage separation. And finally, that God who sees you through today will be there with you tomorrow and the day after and the day after, and the week after, and he will never depart from you. Those are not my words. They are his words. I will be with you right to the end of the age. May God watch over, may God bless, may God keep you, may God protect you, and may God provide every good for you. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we just want to thank you for everything that you do. Today we pray for our Pope, we pray for our bishops, we pray for our priests, pray for deacons, pray for leaders of other world religions, pray for all of God's people around the world, that whatever they, however they profess your name, that your blessings may lead them to the one truth, truth, truth that life is primary and that the value of life is irreplaceable and unique, that everything will end up with salvation in Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders, world leaders. Pray for our president. Pray for leaders around the world. Pray for our senators. Pray for our House of Reps members, governors, mayors, local council leaders. Pray that at this time God may inspire guidance and direction so that whatever choices they make would have good consequences for our people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who gave their lives for our country, those who are serving right now. That God may grant the best rewards in heaven for those we lost. That God may grant the best rewards for protection for those serving today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your own needs. Pray especially for those who have birthdays, anniversaries on this day. That God, who knows your aspirations, who knows your needs, who knows your dreams, who knows your plans. That God may order all of that for your good favor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say, 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. In bread we bring you, Lord, our bodies live us. In wine we offer you, our spirits give. We do not ask you, Lord, who is my neighbor, but join you united now. One in belief. Oh, we are gladly led. Your word, your holy word, and now in answer, Lord, our gift we bring. Our failing faith make whole, our failing hearts renew. Our lives belong to you, our Lord and God. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. As we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, we ask that by the example of St. Philip, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory of your name and the service of our neighbor. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. Philip Neri. You bid your church rejoice. So to you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. You teach her by his words of preaching. You keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death aboard and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. And from me to you and your families, may God's peace rest with you, abide with you, and remain with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In this moment of spiritual communion, let us raise our minds and our hearts and invite the Lord to bring us his body and his blood. Most gracious God, ever-present Lord, in this moment of spiritual communion, we lay bare our hearts, our souls, and our spirits we lay bare our doors that you may come in and nourish us, that you may come in and bless us, that you may come in and give us your body and your blood. Help, O oh God, your sons and daughters around the world who opened your hearts to you. May your presence bless them always. Amen. the gift we bring your word is spoken make it become for us your healing Lord take all our daily toils 
planting our hearts for soil, take all this hard and spoil each hopeful dream. The chances we have missed, the crisis we resist, Lord, in this Eucharist, take hands with him. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that in imitation of St. Philip Neri, we may always long for that food by which we truly live. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the reins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass. So always, I request you to pray for me as I pray for you. And together, we would survive this. And together, we will thrive when all of this is over. So always, never want you to forget that you are still the delight of Almighty God. And that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing a song to our Blessed Mother, and we will sing Hail Holy Queen and Throne the Bob. Hail Holy Queen and Throne the Bob, O Maria, Hail Mother of Mercy and of Love, O Triumph all ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim. Heaven on earth resound the hymn, salve, salve, salve Regina. Life's sweetness here below, O Maria. A hope in sorrow and in woe, O Maria. Triumphal ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim. Heaven on earth resound the hymn, Salve, Salve, Salve.